Dante Falconeri couldn't shake the impression that something was amiss, despite the fact that Port Charles was humming with activity. Over the course of the preceding six weeks, his son Rocco, who was a teenager, had become isolated. It was not unheard of for a teenager to distance himself from his parents. But this was a different situation. Rocco's quiet seemed heavy, as if he was concealing something from them. Dante came to the conclusion that he could not continue to ignore it any longer, particularly in light of the recent changes that had occurred in his own life. These changes included juggling the demands of a demanding work as a detective with the difficulties that came with managing his situation with Sam McCall. But Dante's main priority was Rocco, and he wanted to make sure that his son was comfortable and understood. Rocco was found by Dante in his room after dinner one evening. He was wearing headphones, and his eyes were riveted on the screen of his phone. As Dante took a few deep breaths, he rapped on the door and then entered the room. What's up, buddy? Is it possible for us to talk? The headphones were removed from Rocco's ears as he glanced up. Yeah, that's fine, Dad. A solemn but compassionate expression appeared on Dante's face as he sat down. I have the impression that there has been this wall between us. It seems as though you are going through something, but you do not want me to know about it. As Rocco stared down at his hands, the awkward silence that had descended upon the room continued to grow. Finally, he let out a sigh. It's hard to understand, Dad. Dante nodded, in recognition of the fact that it was not always easy to disentangle one's feelings. I get what you mean, and I am aware that you are maturing, Rocco I know. However, keep in mind that I am here for you no matter what it is. No matter what is going through your head, you don't have to carry it by yourself. To give Dante a little comforting grin that didn't quite reach his eyes, Rocco gave the impression that he was about to open up for a brief period. But then he merely nodded and didn't say anything further. When Dante left his son's room, he was feeling the same way he had before, concerned and determined to assist even though Rocco was not yet ready to share. Dante made the decision to talk to someone the following day who might have some understanding of what Rocco was going through on that particular day. Lulu was still in the process of recuperating, and Rocco could feel the weight of the separation. It is possible that a member of the family, specifically someone who had known Rocco and been present through all of the highs and lows, could offer some insight into the situation. At Kelly's, Dan finally got to meet his mother, Olivia. Upon his arrival, she greeted him with a loving embrace and a gaze that conveyed her awareness that he was thinking about something. As a member of the Falconeri family, Olivia's intuitive abilities were famous. While placing her hand on his arm, she communicated, something is bothering you. Are you referring to Rocco? A sigh escaped Dante's lips as he absentmindedly stirred his coffee. I agree. He's just, he's not that outgoing. It's hard for me to know if he's dealing with issues that are common of teenagers or if he's dealing with anything more serious. I'm scared that it could be related to Lulu in some way. The smile that Olivia gave him was one of compassion. This young man has accomplished a great deal. Even if it was just for a short period of time, the loss of his mother made an impression. On the other hand, you, Dante, have been his rock. Perhaps he simply does not know how to articulate the emotions that he is experiencing. The weight of Olivia's words was felt by Dante, and he nodded his head. Mom, I have been so busy of late. Either I failed to recognize the symptoms, or I just did not make sufficient efforts to get in touch with him. Olivia gave his hand a gentle tap. Dante, you are going to do your very best. Nevertheless, perhaps this is a sign that you should slow down and make time for him. It's possible that the two of you need to take a break for a while to find a place where he is at ease enough to give you his whole attention. Dante gave her words some some thought. An opportunity to reconnect without the distractions of regular life could be just what they needed, and a trip could provide that opportunity. A few days later, Dante made arrangements for him and Rocco to spend the weekend at a secluded cottage located outside of Port Charles, Port Charles. It was a spot where they could take pleasure in the natural surroundings, spend some quality time together, 
and possibly wind up having the heart-to-heart -heart conversation that they both required. As they made their way through the twisting lanes of the forest, Rocco cast his gaze out the window, his countenance being indecipherable. Dante cast a peek in his direction, attempting to come up with the appropriate words to break the silence. To begin, Dante stated, It is important to me that this location is unique. When I was roughly the same age as you, your grandfather brought me here. We used to come out here to go fishing, hiking, and just generally get away from everything. Rocco gave a respectful nod, but did not utter a single word, and Dante had the same feeling of frustration. However, he forced himself to remember that this was not about coercing anything. Rather, it was about providing Rocco with the opportunity to speak whenever he was ready to do so. When they got to the cabin at long last, Rocco appeared to finally calm down a little bit. His state of mind became more relaxed as a result of the tranquil environment, which consisted of towering pine trees and the gentle sound of a stream in the vicinity. Unpacking, cooking, and playing a few games of cards together were the activities that they did together throughout the evening. Both of them found solace in the fact that everything was so straightforward. Dante made the decision to give it another shot later that evening, as they were sitting around a little fire that they had constructed outside. He started off by saying, Rocco, in a low voice, I know you've been carrying a lot. It is not necessary for you to share everything with me, but I want you to know that it is normal to feel whatever you are experiencing. With his face lighted by the warm glow of the fire, Rocco gazed into the flames below. He remained silent for a considerable amount of time. Then, however, he spoke in a voice that was barely audible above a whisper, and added, I miss her, Dad. The pain in Dante's heart. He didn't require Rocco to clarify who he was referring to. He extended his hand on his son's shoulder, and placed a soothing palm on his shoulder. I am aware that you do, friend. As for me, I also miss her. The entire day. When Rocco finally looked up at him, Dante was able to see the anguish and bewilderment that was visible in his eyes. There are times when I fail to comprehend the reasons behind this occurrence. Why was it necessary for her to leave? When Dante was having trouble finding the appropriate words, he took a deep breath. If you ask me, Rocco, life does not always make sense. On occasion, we are not provided with replies. All I know, however, is that your mother loves you more than anything else in the world. She is always with you, even when she is not physically present. They opened up to one another more than they had in the past few months as the night progressed. His anxieties about the future, his anger at the uncertainty, and his anguish over the times he felt he had lost with his mother were all things that Rocco shared with anybody who would listen. You know, Dad, Rocco said, sometimes I'm scared that if I stop missing her, if I stop being sad, it means that I'm forgetting her. Rocco was relating his feelings to his father. Dante gave a slight shake of his head, his tone containing a mild sense of confidence. That is not the way things are done, Rocco. Whether or not you miss her does not determine how much you love her. At all times, she is a component of you, and it would be her wish for you to be glad. She would want you to feel the fullness of your existence. The slow nod that Rocco gave indicated that he was taking in his father's comments. As he came to the realization that his love for his mother did not have to be limited to feelings of melancholy, the load appeared to lighten, even if it was only a little bit. Even when he was experiencing bliss, he was able to keep her memories close to his heart. After Dante awoke early the following morning, he discovered Rocco sitting by the lake's bank with a fishing rod in his hand. A grin appeared on Dante's face as he joined him and cast his own line into the placid water. A portion of their time was spent sitting in quiet companionship, simply taking pleasure in the tranquility of the present moment. Following some time, Rocco finally spoke, his tone becoming more assured. I believe that I am prepared, Dad. All set to make an attempt and proceed. Not to forget, but you are aware of this. With a sense of pride rising up in his chest, Dante glanced at his kid. You have my utmost admiration, Rocco. It is unacceptable for any child of your age to have to go through what you have gone through. 
To add insult to injury, you are managing it with poise and strength. After a long period of time, Dante had not seen Rocco grin in a true manner. Rocco smiled briefly. Dad, I am so happy that we came here. I was in need of this. With a sense of pride rising up in his chest, Dante glanced at his kid. You have my utmost admiration, Rocco. It is unacceptable for any child of your age to have to go through what you have gone through. To add insult to injury, you are managing it with poise and strength. After a long period of time, Dante had not seen Rocco grin in a true manner. Rocco smiled briefly. Dad, I am so happy that we came here. I was in need of this. With a soothing hand, Dante placed his palm on the shoulder of his kid. I feel the same way, Rocco. I am as well. Over the course of the subsequent days, they continued to explore the surrounding area by hiking paths and exchanging humorous tales. As they laughed and recalled, they started to feel better about themselves. The relationship between the father and son was stronger than it had ever been, where they both returned to Port Charles with a revitalized feeling of connectedness. Back at home, everything fell back into its regular pattern, but there was a noticeable difference. In a manner that he had not done in the past, Rocco was more forthcoming with Dante, sharing his thoughts and emotions with him. Finally, the walls that had been separating them had been brought down, which made it possible for them to tackle the challenges of life together. As a result of the trip, Dante was reminded of the significance of being present and of making time for the people he cared about. Although he was aware that Rocco still had a great deal of mending to do, he was also aware that the two of them could tackle any challenge that came their way if they worked together. At the same time, Rocco had gained a fresh viewpoint as a result of the trip. The burden of his suffering was no longer something he was carrying by himself. As long as he had his father by his side, he was confident that they would be able to make it through whatever challenges they faced together.